Hey everyone! In today's video, I wanted to talk to you about something very important. Something that's going to really help you make your solos more interesting. We've all heard that when you play a solo, your solo should tell a story. But what does that really mean? How do you tell a story in a language that has no specific meanings, like the language of music? Well, to answer this question in full would require at least a couple dozen videos. But today I would like to focus on the subject of textures. Textures or devices that you use in your solo to keep a high level of interest in the listener. To explain better what I mean by that, let's examine the devices used in, say, a film to keep a high level of interest for the viewer. You have the plot line, you have tension, you have release of tension, you have a love scene, you have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation that the two characters are having, you have scenic views, you have up-close shots, you have wide shots. All of these things are different, so to speak, emotional textures that the director is using in the film to keep the interest level high and to change things up all the time so that the film is interesting to watch. Well then, can we find a parallel of that in music? How can you switch from a love scene to a dialogue to a chase scene in your solo, figuratively speaking? What devices can you use in your improvising to maintain a level of interest in the listener? I will not be able to cover all the possible and conceivable textures in playing music, but I will cover a few key important ones. Ones that if you get under your belt, you are virtually guaranteed to be playing more interesting and more engaging solos. I will now demonstrate some of these textures to you one by one. Notice that one by one they are not particularly interesting. The real interest starts to happen when you juxtapose them against each other. That's when they really make your solo awesome and interesting and not boring. Here is perhaps the most popular texture in most people's improvising. And I call that texture linear short notes. And it sounds a little something like this. Another texture you can use is modal playing versus diatonic playing, where you chromatically move phrases around. That creates a nice sense of tension in the solo. That is very important sometimes to keep your solo interesting. And it sounds a little something like this. Another texture or another device, so to speak, you could use is playing over the bar line. When most of your solo is phrased within the confines of the bar line, when you start using over the bar line stuff, that creates a very interesting effect. It sounds something like this. Another texture you can use is leaps, and that's a very interesting and unique texture to use. Check it out.
Repeated notes is another device you can use to keep your solo interesting. Now, if you're playing piano or guitar, or even bass, another texture you could use is playing chords. It can sound very appealing and very engaging for the listener. Sounds something like this. So like I said, the real effect of this approach happens when you begin combining textures with one another. As in, first playing some of this, then moving to a different texture, then moving to a different texture, then moving to a different texture. That's when you really see the magic and the full potency of this approach. So let me now demonstrate to you and combine a couple of them with one another and show you how in combination these textures and these devices help keep your solo interesting and engaging to listen to. I will now try to combine short notes linear with polyrhythmic and over the bar line stuff and go from one to another. Now I'll combine repeated notes with leaps. That means first I'll do some repeated notes stuff and then I'll do some leaps stuff. And notice every time I shift texture, you're gonna literally feel your level of interest rise because you'll feel like something new is happening in the solo. And this is something your listeners feel as well, even though they feel it on an intuitive level. Now I'm going to combine short notes linear with chords, chordal textures. Again, notice when you see me do it, when you'll see me go from one to the other, you're gonna feel this rise in the level of interest. And this is precisely what these devices and these textures are designed to do.
if you practice these textures at home separately one by one and then you practice combining them with one another you will automatically train your improvisational instincts to switch these textures for you in real time and thereby keep your solo more interesting. The permutations are literally endless and there are countless more textures you can experiment with than the few basic ones I outlined in this video. If you have any questions or requests, please write them in the comments section below. I literally respond to every single person and I'm happy to help coach you guys through these exercises or other topics and help guide you through your personal journey of becoming a better and better and better musician. If you found this information helpful, feel free to share this video with some of your friends who you think might benefit from it. So far I've had a summer pretty packed with great music and travels. In June we did a long tour with Bob Reynolds and his group. In August I'm going to be traveling all across Europe and Asia with Kamasi Washington and his band. And I'm going to share all of these things here with you through my video vlogs and lessons. So if you're into that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button and that notification button too. <laughs> so that every time I release a new video, you'll be the first to know about it. I will see you in the next video. Peace.